What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Montana State Bobcat Dynasty on NCAA Football 06. Montana State has been off to the best start in the entire series so far, beating the number three and two seeded teams in the nation, not seeded, but ranked, and then falling just short to number one ranked Iowa last week. We're looking to bounce back against the number five team in the nation now against the Purdue Boilermakers. They were ranked a little bit lower when we originally scheduled them, but I guess this just makes our schedule a little bit more difficult, and it would be a great game to bounce back with after our close close loss against the Hawkeyes uh, last week. We are ranked number 24 in the nation. Currently, of course, we are 2-1. and one. That would be where we are after winning two games and losing one, obviously. And now we're looking to win our third of the season. Meanwhile, Purdue, they started off pretty good this season as they are 1-0. and oh. Kicking things off. Now it's going to be Dukes on the return, and he's going to take this one to the left side. He's got himself some great blocking there. Lewis isn't going to be able to get to him. Fogel finally pushes him out of bounds, but not until he gets out to the 30-yard line. Great way to start off the game for them. But now Montana State, great way for us to start off the game after giving up that big kick return, getting in there for the sack and a loss of eight yards. Taking a shot deep there, and oh man, you're wishing that pass could have been picked off. Instead, it's going to be third down and long. Harper throwing that one short for Horton, who picks up about seven yards there. It's going to be fourth and 11 from the 31-yard line, but instead of attempting a field goal, apparently they don't trust their kicker, and they're going to try to pin us down at the one-yard line. That's where they got us until the flags come out. They are going to call fair catch interference. So instead of pinning us down at the three-yard line is where they officially would have marked us, we get to start off at the 18. Cronin getting us some nice breathing room there, even though that penalty did give us some nice room. But now that's going to get us all the way out to the 35-yard line. Henshaw is under some trouble here under duress, and he gets taken down after moving back and forth in the pocket there. That's going to be a loss of 10. Henshaw taking the snap again. Montana State's been very pass-heavy so far this season, just unable to get much on the ground game going. And that pass is going to be dropped even with the pressure in Henshaw's face there. And now trying to go up top for Will Black, a little bit too high, and we're going to have to punt. Pass is going to be caught by Bell, who gets brought down immediately after picking up about three yards. Now faced with an early third down, Bell with the reception, down the left sideline, first down yardage and more. He's going to get brought down at the 45-yard line. Spreading things out on the fresh set of downs. Harper's going to try to run the football, but no, P.J. Morris gets in there for his second sack of the night. Harper looking to throw again. Going deep over the middle there for Bell, and he's got him inside of the red zone. He has been killing us so far today. Harper once again trying to run the football. He falls forward and picks up a gain of one. Harper once again looking to run the football, and he does after evading the initial pressure there, and that's going to pick up a few more yards. Coming out in the goal line formation, they're going to run it up the gut with the fullback. He's going to pick up the first down, setting up goal to go. Kevin Harper is going to be sacked on that play there. Getting to him yet again, third dime today, this time with Ryan Nugent. Harper's got time to throw over the middle. Touchdown, Boilermakers. Johnson over the middle with that catch right there. As a great throw there by Kevin Harper right in between the defenders. That's going to get Purdue on the board. Henshaw rolling to his left. He wanted to try to throw that one, but as a right-handed quarterback, that's a very difficult throw to make with the defender up on you, and he just ends up taking the sack. Now a quick pass there to Will Black's going to set up third down and short. Third and three officially is what this one is going to be. Henshaw steps up into that pass over the middle into some heavy traffic and knocked away. Fourth and three out to punt the football again. And this one's going to be sailing to the left side here. They already had a big kick return today. Can we avoid giving up a big punt return? Maybe not as Dukes is taking this one down the left side again. But this time he's not going to be caught. Touchdown Purdue. And just like that, they're going to be jumping to a two score lead early in the second quarter. Henshaw looking to throw into a little bit of traffic. They're able to, to connect with Marcus Lumpkin for not quite the first down. Third and short, Henshaw rolling to his right, throwing back across his body. I'm not sure what the quarterback was doing on that play, and it's going to be fourth down. Punching the football yet again, or maybe not. We went with the fake punt, the direct snap to the fullback, and Purdue special teams was all over that. They brought him down for a loss, and that's going to give them phenomenal field position on the ensuing drive. 
That pass there is going to be broken up. Just Harper's second incompletion of the game. He's going to connect with Porter on that right side there. Breaking his way through some tackles. And he's down inside of the 10. Once again, they're going to be faced with a goal-to-go situation. And Porter goes down in the backfield. Great job getting to him there. Second down and goal. They're going to hand this one off to Porter. He has some great blocking. He's going to go untouched for the score. And the Boilermakers now enjoying a 21-point lead after the extra point. All right, it's time for Montana State's offense to wake up and do something. And that's a nice start to this drive. Marcus Lumpkin on that left side bringing that pass in. Henshaw dropping back to throw again, rolling to Hazel right off his back foot, and he's going to be intercepted, throwing into some traffic. Washington, who had the tackle on the fake punt, returns that all the way back to the line of scrimmage, just shy of the 30-yard line, and just a dangerous throw there. Henshaw thought he could thread the needle, and he got very close to doing so, but with the double man coverage there, an easy, maybe not an easy interception. That was an impressive interception, but an interception nonetheless. It still goes against us, whether or not it was easy. Easy. Now Kevin Harper is going to be dumping that one off to, I think that's his fullback or maybe his tight end in the flat, picking up a first down. Harper now trying to pitch the football out, but he loses it. Montana State jumps on top of it, and it's about time something went right for this Bobcat team. Henshaw trying to orchestrate a two-minute drill, and that's going to be difficult to do when you're taking 11-yard sacks right there. It's going to be second and 21 from our own five-yard line. Now trying not to give up the safety, and that was a close call there as he barely gets rid of that. Third down and long, Henshaw in his own end zone, dropping way back, letting this one go way downfield into triple man coverage. Pass falls incomplete, and Purdue is going to have some great field position with a minute left to go in the half. Morris spinning his way past some defenders, breaking a tackle there, and he's going to fight his way to the 27-yard line. This team is playing very physical football today. Kevin Harper looking to throw again. In the flat, he's got Bell, who keeps this one, turns it upfield, and picks up a quick first down. 50 seconds left to go. They're going to run this one right up the middle with Porter, and he's going to fight his way into the end zone, if you can even call it that. Just stiff-arming defenders, just knocking them off of them. 28-0 is now your score. Does our offense dare try to get into the end zone before halftime, or do we risk another mistake by doing so? Henshaw steps into this one to the right side, trying to get that one to Lumpkin, and he's got him inside of the 30, down at the 21-yard line, and Montana State's going to use their first timeout. Off of the play fake now, Henshaw's looking to throw over the middle, tipped up into the air, and it's going to be intercepted by Washington. Give him defensive player of the game already. My gosh, he had a clutch fourth down stop, and now two interceptions on the game so far. That pass is going to fall incomplete. Some heavy pressure on the quarterback there. Under 30 seconds left to play, and it looks like they're playing kind of aggressively here. I mean, as aggressive as you can with the run game as they run the option. That run to the left side gets him to the 35-yard line. 15 seconds left to go. Harper looking to throw. Airing this one out to the left side, and it's going to be caught by Bell. He is gone. Touchdown Purdue, 61 yards, just to add some points before halftime. Unbelievable first half for Montana State. Obviously, Purdue was the favorite going into this game, but we expected better from the team that took down the number three and two teams in the nation. This is just, this is hard to watch if you're a Bobcat fan right now, really just a fan of an underdog storyline. I mean, they were almost like the Cinderella team early on as we do have a new quarterback coming in the second half. Maybe the five-star recruit can lead us on a comeback. Harper leads this team downfield, breaking off of a tackle there. And once again, it's going to be goal to go for Purdue. And they're going to punch that one into the end zone. It is 42-0. We haven't seen a beatdown like this on Montana State in a hot minute. McPherson letting that one fly over the middle. Pass is going to be tipped, and he was in danger of being intercepted on that pass. McPherson once again wants to throw over the middle. Will Black in and out of his hands. Granted, that's a tough catch to make. Looking for the third down conversion, and unable to connect there with his receiver. Would have been a tough catch to make there. Fourth down and 10. The offense remains on the field, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. Once again, the Boilermakers are going to have some superb field position with still two minutes left to go in the third quarter. This game is far from over time-wise, but, I mean, scoring-wise, it really feels like this one is already over. They are just killing us now as they are now a point shy from a 50 
Berger after they nailed this extra point, just running the option play. And this Bobcat defense is just absolutely gassed already. McPherson leading that one fly to the right side for Murphy. He goes up and gets it, testing the one-on-one -on -one coverage. So I guess now's a good time to see what this five-star recruit can do. And I mean, maybe he leads us on the comeback of all comebacks. I mean, wouldn't that be a story? Your first time really getting some action. He got a little bit of action in week one, but like, you know, coming in here and leading a huge comeback. I mean, instant legend, instant hall of fame right there. And there's maybe the start to it with Turner over the middle. Brett McPherson with maybe his first. I don't remember if he already threw a touchdown this season or not, but at least one of his first touchdowns of his career. Well, Purdue has the backups in, so maybe, you know, we can get a little bit of points for our pride here. Some turnovers, some stats going our way. Thornton looking to run it here. They have a couple of mobile quarterbacks on this roster, and he's going to pick up a solid game there, making it third down and four. Where they're going to run it with McDonald. He had nothing going to the right side, bounces it to the left side for first down yardage on third down. Nearing the end of the third quarter, Thornton's going to throw that one over the middle. He's got McDonald for a, a short gain there. Last play before halftime, or not before halftime, but before the fourth quarter, as Thornton's going to take off and run again, make some man miss. Man, they're just playing dirty on us right now. They're not dirty, but, you know, they're showing off, and this defense, I mean, all the starters are still in, and they don't want to see these backups out here flexing on them, but, I mean, that's what they're doing. Just, I mean, if we're that good, just don't let the the the, the backups, you know, come out here and flex on us, but that's what they've been doing so far. Spreading things out on third down. Thornton's going to fire over the middle. Pass is going to be tipped up into the air and incomplete. Finally, the defense gets a stop on third down. They're going to attempt this field goal, but it's going to be hooked to the right and no good. So no 50-burger yet. McPherson, you know, trying to play for some pride. He's going to test that right side again. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage last time, but by the time the ball gets there, there's four defenders in the area. McPherson rolling to his left, and he's not the most mobile quarterback in the world. We've gotten used to, you know, Kevin Fuller and, and uh, Larry Stevens being able to run the football. McPherson, he's got like 76 speed, with it, which isn't horrible, but it's definitely not, uh, you know, your mobile quarterback speed right there. Fourth down and nine. We're going to be going for this again. Up top over the middle, and Will Black comes down with that one. I don't think we've converted a third down yet today. I could be wrong, but I don't think we've done much. And there we just converted a fourth down. Pass to the left side is going to sail out of bounds. McPherson let that one get away from him a little bit. Second down, McPherson stepping up into the pocket, trying to test that left side again, and I'm not sure if Turner was ready for the football. Third down and 10. Montana State's going to go five wide. McPherson's under some pressure, throwing that one on the move and just a touch off the mark there. Going forward on fourth down yet again because why not? Over the middle pass is going to be broken up this defense, even with the backups in here, making some big plays. They're going to run out the last three minutes of the clock and we're going to lose 49 to six. Like I said earlier, I don't remember the last time we got embarrassed quite like that in a game. I mean, that was rough. I had high expectations going into this game because of our first two wins. And I mean, the loss that we suffered against Iowa last week, I mean, they had to put together a game-winning fourth quarter drive against us. And then we just were unable to put a drive together to come back and take the late lead. I mean, we could have very well been 3-0 going into this game. I don't know what happened to us. It must've been some kind of a mental thing. I mean, I think that they're definitely the worst team that we've played so far today. But I mean, Maybe they aren't. If you look at the scores, they beat us by a lot. And all our other games have been pretty close so far this season. So just an embarrassing game here from Montana State as we drop to 2-2 two and two before we enter in the conference play next week. Speaking of conference play, we're looking at some of the games that took place there. 35-45, Duke defeats Eastern Washington. NAU is going to defeat Weber State as they already have a game inside of the conference there. Sacramento State defeats uh, San Diego State. A little bit of an upset there, maybe. The Battle of Idaho and Idaho State is victorious, 35-16 there. And finally, the Grizzlies are going to lose to Syracuse. And that's going to be a wrap on today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like is always appreciated. And until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.